Good afternoon. My name is Diamante Walker. I am the Deputy Executive Director of the Urban Redevelopment Authority, and I would like to welcome you uh, to the regular board meeting for the URA on behalf of Executive Director Greg Flistrom, uh, Chairman Sam Williamson. Uh, so we have had two uh, special board meetings dedicated to the Lower Hill. Today, we will address standard URA business by way of a regular board meeting. So I wanna thank you for joining us and Ch uh, Chairman Williamson will be with us shortly and we'll convene the meeting. Thank you. Talk. Hello. Hello. I'm so, gonna figure out my. Mm -hmm. All right, my my video on. I can't see it. Yeah, there it is. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So we did the introduction, Sam, and you do have a quorum present. I can tell you that Representative Ed Ganey will not be joining today, but we do have uh, Board Member Powell, Hirsch, and Lavelle on the line. Great. Well, then, um, with that said, then, uh, welcome to the June 2021 regular board meeting of the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll officially call the meeting to order. And the first order of business, I believe, is the approval of the minutes from the May board meeting. I'll move. It's actually that, the April board meeting. The I'm May sorry, minutes April. are still in development. Yeah, sorry, April minutes. Thank you. Motion to approve. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Second. Motion. motion in multiple seconds. Um, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next, I think we have public comments and I believe there are a number of registrants for live public comment. Uh, yes, uh, first up is Celeste Scott. I believe, yep, there she is. Uh, Good afternoon. You have three minutes, Celeste. Uh, you can start now. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Celeste Scott, and I'm the Housing District Organizer for Pittsburgh United. And I'll be commenting on the Housing Opportunity Fund. The Housing Opportunity Fund is a critical vehicle to ensure that urgently needed resources are available to ensure all Pittsburghers have safe, accessible, sustainable, affordable housing. Our housing table is comprised of over 40 organizations and individuals, including residents, citywide, attorneys, CDCs, neighborhood community groups, grassroots activists, practitioners, and more. Those organizations and individuals have been working tirelessly to win and implement this fund. So we have a unique opportunity with the resources coming from the American Recovery Plan to begin to close the 20,000 unit gap in affordable housing for those at the lowest income. And we hope that you will help us with this. So we had some annual allocation plan recommendations due to the loopholes of the eviction moratorium and its upcoming end to keep people housed. HSP plus need to allow for moving costs along with the security deposit and or first plus rent. Fair housing criteria should be applied to the anticipated outcomes of each program and the data needed is identified to assess each program on the programmatic end. And below are some concerns that we continue to hear from our resource navigator. I wanna preface this with thanking Jeremy and Tina for continued communication that's been really good. And we wanted to thank the advisory board members who continue, continuously increased meaningful communication with us as well.
So we have all seen how this plan can work and create real change when we are all on the same page, working together as advocates, housing opportunity fund staff, advisory board members, and governing board to get resources to those the fund was intended to assist. We have always approached working through barriers and obstacles with the spirit of collaboration and forward movement in service of the many lives this fund was intended to tangibly improve. Accountability and transparency benefits everyone, especially those in more need now than ever of this fund. Respectfully submitted the Housing Justice Table of Pittsburgh United. Thank you. Thank you, Celeste. That uh, public comment is also in the board packet in written form if you want to reference it throughout the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up um, is Phyllis Gafour. Uh, let me find you real quick, Phyllis. Okay. Um, once I see that you're, um, could you unmute? Okay, uh, you're. Okay, hold on, just a little technical difficulty here. Um, Phyllis, I see that you're still on mute. Okay, Hello. there you go. Yep, there you go. Uh, your three minutes starts now. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sure it will not be that long. Um, I was trying to submit a written statement instead of verbal uh sitting still like this for six hours really is difficult for me um i wanted to continue some issues i had in part one i'm going to go as quickly as possible since i did submit something uh during the uh, last meeting um i'm concerned about the the lerta fund admi administration reportedly totaling 40 million. It should be conducted with people needs with their properties in mind. It's not a real estate experiment to be done by certain parties. Um, there are multiple hill serving businesses, churches, nonprofit agencies and individuals who have sacri sacrificed time and, and effort to help hill residents survive, especially during a pandemic. Secondly, the Greater Hill Master Plan was developed by the Hill Consensus Group, not the Hill CDC, and the Hill House Association to, divide, to guide development reviews. It was not meant to be pulled out and used as a weapon when certain individuals want to do that. Low and very low income individuals need social wraparounds, health infrastructure, public transportation, youth and, and uh, children programming so that we can try to move out of this very uh, devastating uh, situation in the Hill, especially Middle Hill. Top-down decisions, primarily by Hill governing boards, URA, SCA, CSIP, their management committee, Growth Hill Fund, and the lead CDC have been proven- Phyllis, you've got one minute left. Right, have been proven to be uh, ineffective in the equitable distribution of resources. There's a need for fact checking by the URA with regards to statements from the uh, B BPG and PAR regarding to the history, policies and impact and governmental involvement. There needs to be better communication, intra and intercommunication so that the entire heel will know what's going on when it goes on. And I'm going to stop right there, but I am concerned that individuals and businesses and nonprofits were left out of this yearly funding mechanism that the Hill CDC wants to do. I really have a problem when one agency is chosen over another. I don't care if it's 4% of the pot, I don't care if it's 2% or anything like that. We can't go through 20 more years of decay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Phyllis. Um, next up is uh, Tom Thomas Aob. Um, if you're in the 
meeting, could you please raise your hand? I'm not seeing you in the attendees list. Daniel, I don't believe that the other three um, public commenters are present. I think I don't believe that they'll be giving public comment today. Uh, so okay. we can we can um, move forward with the meeting. Okay. If they are, maybe they can just at some point signal themselves in the chat or Q and A or something. They can raise their hands. Okay. Anyone else? Is that no, that was all that hand? registered for public for live public comment. Okay, and there is are there no other uh, members of the public who wish to address the board? Looking through the list of attendees, and I'm looking at the chat, and I don't see any raised hands uh, or any notes. So I uh, I'll take that to mean that uh, that's all the public comment we have for today. Uh, so we'll move on to announcements. Beginning with the uh, the commercial lending impact dashboard, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is that, Jennifer, are you going to present that? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Wilhelm, the Director of Commercial Lending at the URA. And this is our monthly dashboard to give you an update on where we stand with our business lending year to date. We have... Um, close 26 loans at the URA. And we're also showing our work at InvestPGH. As you know, the URA staff currently staffs InvestPGH. And so our team does their lending as well. And we've closed 10 loans over there. We are on target to hit our goal of 70 loans across both entities by the end of the year. We have our highlight here, Shadow Benny, a, a vegan, Trinidadian restaurant that's gonna be opening in the central north side, hopefully by the end of the summer. They are currently in farmer's markets, uh, three farmer's markets across the city, you can find them, and they sell amazing Trinidadian food. So if you have any questions about this or any of the numbers, just let me know. Great, thank you. we can move on to the housing dashboard. Jeremy, that's you. Good afternoon. Um, as of this week, we have helped uh, nearly 1,300 households uh, with rental, utility, and mortgage assistance. 70% of the funding has been spent uh, on rental arrears. Um, it's important to note here that while we have been under several uh, eviction moratoria, these do not protect and cover all cases. So we have been preventing evictions since the pandemic. Uh, for those cases that are not covered under the moratoria. Um, the average time it takes us to prevent an eviction is about one week. Um, our program stands ready to assist with more eviction cases as the federal eviction moratorium is set to expire at the end of the month. Um, to date, we've deployed about $2.3 million in assistance. Uh, and related to this, we also now have our legal assistance programs up and running, uh, which provide free housing legal services uh, for tenants and homeowners in the city. Um, I want to acknowledge the public comments submitted today uh, and look forward to having discussions with the community to provide more information and updates. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jeremy. Any questions before we move on from the board about the, the housing dashboard? Okay, then uh, I think we can move on to the voting agenda, which uh, is relatively brief this meeting, which probably will be a welcome development after six or seven hours of URA board meetings over the last uh, couple of several weeks. Uh, and the first item is in residential lending and investments. Uh, it's the Harvard Beatty housing development in East Liberty. I think uh, this is Evan, I don't see Evan. Evan Miller is gonna present on this, I believe. Yes, Evan will be presenting. Oh, there you are. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Evan Miller, and I'm with the Residential Lending and Investments Unit here at the URA. And I'm going to discuss Harvard Beatty Housing, a project that's located at 121 North Beatty Street in East Liberty. 
and specifically authorization authorizations to enter into a four hundred fifty thousand dollar rental gap program loan with the developer as well as authorization for the final ura board action that's required for the disposition of this property um, that's listed there on the slide um, the developer and borrower here is harvard baby housing llc which is an entity that was formed by trek development group um, to carry out this project the project itself is a 42 unit new construction uh, mixed income apartment building that's going to be constructed on what's currently a ura owned surface parking lot on the edge of the East Liberty Business District. Of the 42 units, 33 of the units will be affordable, um, four at 20% the area median income AMI, um, four at 30% AMI, 14 at 50%, and um, 11 at 60% AMI. Nine of the units are going to be market rate. 33 of the units are one bedroom, and uh, nine of the units are two bedrooms. So Harvard Beatty Housing is the second project in the last several years that Trek has built in this corner of East Liberty. The first being Mellon's Orchard, um, located adjacent to this site, just north and west. Uh, that was also funded by the URA um, back in 2019 and completed and put in service in late 2020. Mellon's Orchard has 47 total units. Um, 37 of those units are affordable housing. So um, Mellon's Orchard, and Harvard Beatty together represent 89 new housing units in East Liberty with over 80% um, developed as affordable housing. For the recently opened Mellon's Orchard Project, Trek worked with community organizations, including Penn Plaza Support and Action Coalition to advertise and do outreach specifically to households that were displaced by the closure and demolition of Penn Plaza. 35% uh, of the affordable units at Mellon's Orchard house former Penn Plaza residents. Uh, with Harvard Beatty, Trek has undertaken similar efforts, uh, engaging with Penn Plaza Support and Action Coalition throughout the project's pre-development process. Uh, Trek's posted banners at the site specifically highlighting that um, Penn Plaza residents should apply. Uh, they've done social media outreach on Facebook and Instagram, and they've had uh, project info blasted out by the new Pittsburgh Courier in their um, regular email blasts. So I believe to date, 47 former Penn Plaza residents have joined Trek's um, interested list for this project, and I think 34 have actually applied to live at Harvard Baby. So the project itself is a $13.1 million project. In August of 2020, it was awarded 9% uh, low-income housing tax credits by the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency, PHFA. This tax credit equity is going to fund 75 to 80% of the total development budget. The remaining gap is filled by a PHFA conventional first mortgage. Um, an allocation from PHFA's FAIR program. And notably, this project is the first project to receive funding from the East Liberty Trid, um, El Tridra East End Housing Development Program uh, that the UR is actually administering on behalf of El Tridra. So the project received a $500,000 loan commitment from El Tridra back in May. Uh, this $450,000 RGP request would be uh, an additional source of soft financing to help bring this project to fruition. And the loan would be sourced by home 2019 funds. I would have a 0% interest rate, a cash flow note with a 40 year term with a 40 year uh, affordability deed restriction to match. The project's expected to close in August or September and um, be in service by the end of 2022. I want to note that Bill Gaddy, the president of Trek Development Group, is on the call if there's any questions the board may have. but. With that, I'm going to turn over for discussion of this loan request and this final disposition authoriz authorization uh, for Harvard Baby Housing LLC. Thanks, Evan, for that very thorough overview. I was actually going to ask about the Penn Plaza placement, so I appreciate the update there. Uh, Bill, I don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, nothing, nothing of note. It was, it was a great presentation. Thank you. And uh, we, we've had an excellent partnership with Penn Plaza Citizens in Action and Crystal Jennings over there has done a great job really finding and identifying residents from former Penn Plaza and bringing them back. So that's been a productive partnership that we're, that we're proud to be involved with. The, uh, also, we had a very robust back and forth with, with folks at ELDI about the design. Uh, 
the design features and the amenities, and uh, I'm happy where that landed as well. So we're, we're, we're proud of it and we're excited to move forward. Great, any uh, questions or comments from the board at all? No, I was just gonna to commend um, uh, Crystal Jennings and, and everyone else of the URA um, and the developers uh, for really trying to prioritize the Plaza residents uh, coming back into this area. I know when we <clears throat> voted on this initially, that was uh, a big point of contention. So I, I appreciate um, and applaud the effort to bring people back and, and to continue to up those numbers as more units become available. I, I second that, and there's a good piece today in uh, public source about it too. <clears throat> Great. So, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, then I think a motion to a motion would be in order. So moved. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? motion carries thank you thank you uh next we have um uh moving into commercial lending yes i can take this okay i have two items today the first being ratification um, to accept the one million dollar investment from fnb first national bank to be used for a new program that we are also launching. So as you may uh, recall, FNB has decided to provide an investment to the URA for $1 million. And this investment will be used uh, in, in its entirety to fund the new Avenue of Hope small contractor line of credit program. Their dollars are specifically allocated to the Hill District out of the seven avenues, we are going to be using their dollars for the Hill. The URA is gonna augment the fund, this program with other dollars, which will support the other six districts. With the uh, vote today of the ratification of the dollars, it'll also launch this new program and it will be available um, today, as of today for people to apply if it is uh, voted through. Are there any questions on this uh, on this investment or on the program itself? So, so someone if I may, I just want to underscore that, you know, and thank Councilman Lavelle for his leadership in making this particular investment from FMB possible. Um, he, you know, made several phone calls on our behalf to be able to get a tool that would start to address some of the uh, small contractor needs, particularly on the lower hill. So thank you, Councilman Lavelle, for making those phone calls and coordinating and facilitating those meetings. And thank you, Jennifer, for uh, helping to pull together a term sheet that would make this possible. I think this is going to be a huge help to our MWBE business community, particularly those that are working in the avenues of hope where we're starting to see more investment and more development. Toward, towards that end, um, thank you, Director Walker, for sort of helping me understand what I was trying to get from FNB when we were having those conversations. I um, also just want to thank uh, Vince DeLahey, Lisa Kelly, and Brent Semesco. I hope I didn't mess his name up too much. That was great. Um, for taking time to actually meet with us, understand what we were trying to get accomplished, and come up with a help come up with a, a resource um, to do that. So I just want to thank them as well. So this is a ratification. So I believe the board voted on this a few months ago via email. So I'm not sure, um, Nathan, if you procedurally what the board needs to do here um, to, to, in order to adopt the ratification, but I um, just wanna disclose for the public that the board did uh, vote to approve the program via email a few months ago. It's best to still have a, a motion and, an, and a, a vote. Motion to approve. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Our second item today is 
around moving money from the URA to InvestPGH in order to fund a new program that InvestPGH will be rolling out on June 26th. It's called uh, CRIB as an abbreviation, but it is the Child Care Reinvestment Business Loan Program. It'll be a forgivable loan for child care businesses within the city limits up to $20,000. We are very excited about this. I will mention that when PNC originally invested the $10 million, um, we had always known that 1.5 would go to support child care. At the time, we didn't know exactly which entity between the URA and InvestPGH would be best suited to roll out the various components of the child care support. So the URA had taken on a larger chunk of the dollars. And now, you know, that the program has been developed and is ready to launch, we have, you know, we have decided that InvestPGH is actually the better entity to roll out the forgivable loan. And so we just like to move that money over. It is the money that's always existed for this purpose. It, there's no, there's nothing new um, or new funding source here. It's really just a, a pure movement of dollars. Thanks for that explanation. Um, also, a really critical need in the city to help small child care providers be able to add capacity and improve their their uh, their facilities. I mean only going to get more acute, frankly, over the course of the remainder of this year as, as people, more and more people get back to their offices and work from home becomes uh, increasingly a, a thing of the past. So yep. it seems we pretty, are, particularly timely as well. We're also very excited that we are partnering with technical assistance with Chatham University, and we are also working closely with Trying Together on a potential uh, pilot program that should be rolling out this fall. So there's other components beyond the dollars and so we're excited about the entire package and how that might really help the industry inside the city. Thanks, any other questions? I have one. Um, is the funding at all contingent on where they are in the quality system? Um, if they are low, uh, like a one or two star quality uh, care um, facility versus a four or five star, is there additional funding or anything like that? No, the funding is not based on where they are in the quality stars. This program is open to new and existing home-based and facility. Of course, the goals of the entire program are to help people move up in the stars, to help increase the number of child care facilities that are available, and to provide support and recovery for child care facilities in home base that have been hurt by COVID. So there are those goals, but no, we're looking at each business that applies individually, looking at what they want to use the money for and what their needs are. As you may know, the city is also launching a separate fund coming up where there'll be additional grant dollars available through their fund for child care. So we are working very closely together to make sure that people are navigating the opportunities and that we're referring to each other. There's no harm, of course, people will be allowed to apply to both but we are coordinating closely across the two programs. Any other questions? Uh, was that a beginning yeah. of a motion, Councilman? <laughs> motion, is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. So now I think we go to Larmer. Yep. And do Good we have everybody. Sarah? There we go. Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sarah Shore. I'm with the Housing, Lending, and Investments team. Um, today's agenda item should be pretty straightforward. The project team is looking for board approval on the final drawings and evidence of financing for the Larimer Phase 3 development. As a reminder, this is the last of the Larimer Choice neighborhood projects. Um, the board has seen this item, this project, a couple of times, and today is the third and final disposition item that needs approval before construction closing can occur. 
I know we don't have a lot of time today, but just as a quick recap of the project, this is a mixed use project with 42 units of housing. 33 of these units are affordable. There's also 4,800 square feet of commercial space on the ground floor. Um, in April of this year, the URA board approved financing for this phase in a total amount of 2.1 million. This included both residential and commercial loans. Today's request is a follow-up from a, a 2019 board meeting where this board approved a development proposal and the execution of the deed for the conveyance of this property to the housing authority. Since then, um, the housing authority has closed on the purchase of the property with the URA. The developer, which is McCormick Farron Salazar, are working to gain all the city approvals needed for closing and construction closing is expected to occur in July of this year. Um, the project has you know, involvement with the URA's quality control and inspections team. And just to, re to reiterate, today we are requesting board authorization to accept the final construction drawings and final evidence of financing for this project. Great, thank, thank you very you much for that overview. Any questions? questions? Uh, if there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and I think we have Richard Snipe for the next item. Uh, good afternoon, folks. I'm Richard Snipe, the Deputy Executive Director of the Pittsburgh Housing Development Corporation. And this afternoon, we are asking for authorization to expand the, the boundaries for the facade, uh, for the, our facade improvement program. We're asking to go beyond the 400, the current 400 feet radius from our construction projects to include the entire neighborhood. And the reason for that request is we have found that the demand is coming from families who live beyond the 400 feet of our construction projects. And we like to have an opportunity to be able to include more families in the community, to be able to give them an opportunity to improve their homes, as well as also be able to strengthen the community by the facade uh, program. And so we're asking for that uh, expansion from the 400 feet to include the entire neighborhood. Okay. Um, do we have any sense of how many additional um, homeowners will, will now be eligible? We've been doing a, uh, an average mailing of uh, approximately uh, over 200 families we've been mailing uh, within that 400 feet radius. And what we've come to find is we've got the uh, response so far year to date. Uh, we've only been able to, to actually fulfill four, ap four, ap four applications. The right. demand has been somewhere around over 100 people who've asked for help, but we've been not able to to do anything because of the restrictions. So we've asked those folks to do. Uh, in the meanwhile is to um, be patient. We were gonna see if we can get uh, the boundaries extended, but that the need is there. Um, it's just that with 400 feet radius, it's extremely restrictive. And we're finding that folks are, you know, two streets away, uh, a block and a half away, um, and, and we're not able to service them. So that's why we're asking this request. The, the need is there. We just don't have the means to be able to address it because of current restrictions. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So we'll be able to go back to those, you know, hundred or so applicants we've already received this year and follow up with them. Yeah, we've kept a waiting list as what we've done. Great. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Brighton Heights. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lily Friedman, and I work within the URA's Development Services Unit. Today, authoriz authorization is requested to accept the redevelopment proposal and enter into a disposition contract with Allegheny Land Trust in the Brighton Heights neighborhood of Pittsburgh for the sale of six vacant parcels, formerly home to the St. John's Hospital, at the price of $106,900 plus transaction costs. Next slide, please. 
The total development cost for this project is approximately $1,057,120. The scope of work includes a 3.6 acre vacant green space rehabilitation in an environmental justice neighborhood. The Vasek Park space has been designed through ongoing community engagement processes to manage stormwater with rain garden features, balancing the ecological needs of a high priority watershed while also ensuring recreational function for the community, including a walking pathway. Pictured on the right, you may note the rain garden landscaping plan and the lower rain garden cross section. I can take any questions at this time. Great, any questions? Yeah, just curious, what is, you said environmental justice neighborhood, obviously, you know, I know what environmental justice is, but is this a specific designation for this neighborhood? Yeah, the DEP, um, Department of Environmental Protection, defines an environmental justice area uh, through a couple different metrics, including um, census tracts where 20% or more individuals live at or below the federal poverty line, um, whether there are 30% or more of the population identifying as non-white minorities, as well as ecological factors like access to park space. I know that, thank you. Sure. Right. Any other questions? That's great, okay. So uh, I think a motion to approve would be in order. Second. All uh, right, motioned and seconded. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And then uh, I think we have David Serbin on Ferrywood. Hello, everyone. David Serbin, Director of Development Services. I have a project here out in the western side of Pittsburgh, neighborhood of Ferrywood. Had for a long while a project, a bunch of vacant land, a relatively challenging uh, project with some of the topography, but we have for you an opportunity. We hope that uh, we can use this to get authorization to go into exclusive negotiations and have a joint venture with uh, Regional Industrial Development Corporation, that's RIDC. So you see the uh, aerial view from uh, global satellite look, if you can go to the next slide. You'll see that on that site, we're going to join three parcels together and then make it usable for a warehousing space. So we uh, think that's a good use of the space that we were prohibited from using it for any residential use when we uh, obtained that property a few years back. Uh, this uh, project has several good things going for it. Uh, it's going to give a good return from the public investment, allowing us to use some of those funds in the future to do more affordable housing and uh, reach some of the equity goals that we hope to do. Along with this uh, on the financial side, it also uh, should bring in some jobs to Western Pennsylvania. So we believe we have an anchor tenant that will add uh, net positive jobs. And lastly, it takes a property that didn't have a tax basis to it until we move this forward. It will then be uh, paying taxes, adding to the increment and additional uh, help with some of the budgets. Happy to take any questions for this industrial use of the Ferrywood site. Can, can you just describe um, the, if you can, sort of the, the purpose of the joint venture uh, with RIDC and, the, and the, the potential upsides for the URA and the public that result from that? Sure. So oftentimes we have properties that we just sell uh, to a developer. In this case, we thought we were in a good position to join with the developer to move it forward. We already had the site in hand. We had some uh, negotiations uh, preliminary with an anchor tenant. So we thought we were bringing to the table a number of resources and uh, something to the deal that then we could partner with them. And uh, so it'd be a good marriage of different uh, capacities. So it, takes instead of just a, a smaller uh, fee for land uh, as one part of it, allows us to stay in the deal as a uh, equity partner and thereby get a cash flow uh, for the next few years and any refinancing or future sale. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is, this is great. This is a sign of the you know, URE leadership really uh, trying to be innovative in the way we approach Approach these kinds of deals. I mean, this is a parcel that's in a industrial park surrounded by warehouses and other industrial buildings. 
traditionally, you know, this would be a candidate simply for a sale to some, you know, private for-profit developer that would then itself benefit from the long-term financial upside of the redevelopment. And, you know, here what we're trying to accomplish through this joint venture is to have the URA and the public instead retain some public ownership uh, and, and be the ones benefiting from the, from the economic uh, upside of the redevelopment. And if I might add, Sam, I think that it presents an opportunity to get flexible funding that we can then reinvest in the mission investment um, initiatives of the URA. Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently handicapped to be able to do that in any sort of nimble, flexible way. And so this, I, I do think it's a, a very innovative way to try to, to get to those, those ends. So thank you. Any other, any questions or other comments from the board? So what we're approving is, uh, you know, a different kind of exclusive negotiations or approving exclusive negotiations to finalize this joint venture under which we would retain ownership as the parcel is developed, uh, as opposed to our traditional exclusive negotiations where we're negotiating just to sell something. So if there are no other questions or comments, then a motion might be in order. So move. Second. Thank you. The motion and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Which I think takes us to the disclosure agenda. Anything in particular on here that we want to call out or highlight this month? Most of these items are procedural in nature. I don't think that we want to highlight them for the board and the public, but they are administrative in nature and um, can be discussed at the board's discretion. But I think you can adopt this in full. Motion to approve it in its entirety. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Well, uh, I think after potentially setting some records for the longest URA board meetings on record, we might now set a record for the shortest <laughs> URA board meeting, at least in a, re in a in recent history. Um, so unless there are any uh, good and welfare uh, or other announcements, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.